uh, we don't uh, need to drive our cars quickly anywhere. We've been evaluating the life of Jesus Christ as a solution to the world's greatest pandemic. Uh, we started from his birth, uh, why he was born. He was born because he needed a body. We looked at his life. P. Wills took us through his life. We realized that in order to solve the biggest challenge in the world, he first of all needed also to give us an example. Uh, so we have his example. We have the example solved with his life, and then he went to the cross to die. And uh, as Pastor Buzaya has shared with us, in his death, we were substituted, and in that same death, we were included. And by God's grace, today we are here today because it didn't end with his death. Hallelujah. Uh, we are grateful to God today and excited today because Jesus did not only die. Every faith, every religion, every source of worship in the world can claim that the prophet was born. They can claim that the prophet lived. They can claim that the prophet died. But there is nobody anywhere that can claim that he rose from death and left an empty grave as a tourist attraction. Jesus Christ not only died, but he rose. And why did he rise? Uh, why did he rise? And what amazing distinction does this rising from the dead have for us all? Hallelujah. This morning, I'm so excited. I just want to read scriptures. And I'd like us to read 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 from verse 3 all the way to the end. And I'll just read, and then that will be our summary. Uh, thank you for paying attention and participating all the, all the while. The Bible says, what a God we have. This is the message translation. Say, what a God we have, and how fortunate we are to have him. This father of our master, Jesus, because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now that by virtue of his resurrection, we were given new life. Now, God is keeping watchful, careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when we will have it all, life healed and whole. Now, one of the major benefits we enjoy from this resurrection is that once he took us with him, so us with his death, included us in his death, when he rose, we also rose with him, new life. The Bible says, as we rose, we rose with him. And guess what? That future is not postponed till tomorrow. That future is not only secluded to the future. That future begins now. It means right now we can begin to enjoy uh, the beauty of this new life. And that future includes a future in heaven and it starts now. So one of the very big benefits is a future is a life that starts now and is enjoyable from now all the way to heaven. And God is keeping watch over us. At the end, that life is going to come into outright fullness where our life will be completely healed and completely whole. Number two. One of the clear things we have also in this because he leaves, he says verse from verse 4, uh, from verse 6. He says, I know how great this makes you feel. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are here, you better be feeling great. You better be feeling great at the new life that God gave you because he resurrected from the dead. He says, I know how great this makes you feel. Even though you have, put up with, you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold puts in fire, comes out, in its of it proved pure genuine faith put through suffering comes out proved genuine when jesus wraps this all up it's your faith not your goal that god will have on display as evidence of his victory ladies and gentlemen this new life already makes you the highest quality and the highest grade of gold but you know that you as gold you will pass through circumstances you will pass through situations you will pass through challenges you will pass through fire but guess what? Because you are gold, that fire is only going to refine you. That fire is going to refine your faith. And at the end of time, God will put your faith on display as something he will showcase to the world and give our words and medals for because your faith, which is already gold by virtue of his new life, is refined in fire as you grow in him. Thank God for his resurrection. We have been given new life and we're as good as gold. But that's not all. Bible says, because it says you never saw him. And this is Peter talking to a generation of people far flung around the world, you and I inclusive, who never saw him. 
He said, you never saw him, yet you love him. You still didn't, don't see him, yet you trust him with laughter and singing. Because you kept on believing, you will get what you are looking forward to, total salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on a continuum. We are on a life that is a continuum. Our life in God is a great life, and the future starts now, and it goes and grows and grows and grows all the way to awesome, ultimate delight in His very presence. And every journey we take from now to that time, we need to just keep on believing with laughter and with singing. And as we continue to believe and continue to laugh and continue to have faith in him, we are going to have access to total salvation. Total salvation of our body, our spirit, our soul, our every dimension of our lives will be completely and wholly saved. That is the end that we are getting to. And it's an amazing continuum. Hallelujah. Now, we're still going to keep on reading. Uh, it says... The prophet who told us these was coming asked a lot of questions. This thing that you and I are freely enjoying was a topic of discussion among many prophets who are asking about the gift of life that God was preparing. The Messiah spirit led them in on some of it, that the Messiah would experience suffering, followed by glory. They clamored to know who and when. All they were told was that they were serving you. Amen. They were serving you and I. You who by orders from heaven have now heard for yourselves through the Holy Spirit the message of those prophecies fulfilled. Do you realize how fortunate you are? Angels will have given anything to be in on this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a generation where the vaccine, the solution was found, the solution was developed, the solution came, the solution solved, and now you and I enjoy a life where we can be free from sin, free from death, free from sickness, free from poverty, free from every pain that came with the fall of man. You and I can be free. Prophets long to know what is the detail, what was going to happen. They wanted to know they were only given a small part. Angels wanted in on it. But you and I are the generation that benefited from all their service. And this is the life that we have because he resurrected. I don't know about you this morning, but I am so excited at what Jesus Christ came to do in dying and in rising on the third day. That's not all. That's not all. Let's keep on with the responsibility we have in this beautiful and amazing thing that God has done for us. He says, so roll up your sleeves, ladies and gentlemen, there's work to do. He says, put your mind in gear. Your mind should not be on neutral. Your mind should be in gear, ready for action, ready for progress. He says, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. So this gift is, in, is being released in batches. It's a continuum. It's being released in batches. And he says, be ready to receive the gift that comes when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old groups of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know better then, you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a life shaped by God's life. Let this life be shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. He's saying you and I need to imitate God. We need to look to God and imitate him and begin to live our lives as he lived his life. We need to look at Jesus' example and everything that he did is holy. And that needs to be the, 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 the template and the example that defines how our own lives will be lived. He says you call out to God for help and he helps. He's a good father that way. But don't forget, he's also a responsible father who won't let you get away with sloppy living. So God wants us to use the opportunity of this life he has given us we now have a choice. It is not by automatic. We now have a choice to put our minds in gear, roll our sleeves, and be ready to receive this gift. We shouldn't slip back into our old way of life, but as obedient children, we should allow our lives to be pulled into a way of life that is shaped by God. Hallelujah. That's not all. We keep reading. It says, your life is a journey that I, you must travel with a deep consciousness of God. It cost God plenty to get you out of that dead end, empty headed life you grew in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought, even though it was only lately at the end of the ages, become public knowledge. God always knew what He was doing, what He was going to do for you. It's because of this sacrifice, Messiah whom God then raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God and you know you have a future in God. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you and I have a future in God. Our future in God is sealed and delivered by virtue of his resurrection from the dead. What makes us different? What makes our faith in Christ totally brand new and un unparalleled by any faith is that he rose. He rose from dead, he came to life, and he became the firstborn among those who will not have death as their end. He made an end to death as an end. And he said, now you and I can cross over and have a certain future. Because he lives, you and I have a life, okay, that's going to transit before, beyond death. Our future has been made certain. Now that you have cleaned up your lives, amen. By following the truth, love one another as if your life depends on it. Listen, that, gentlemen, the action that proceeds from all of this realization of his resurrection is love. Not love, not casually. It says love as if your lives depended on it. I saw a quote online. It says love yourself as if your life depended on it. Jesus Christ said, no, that's not the quote that needs to be viral today. The love that quote that needs to be viral today on Twitter, on social media, on social messages is love one another as if your life depends on it. Your new life is not like your old life. Your old birth came from mortal sperm. Your new birth comes from God's living word. Hallelujah. Just think, a life conceived by God himself. That's why the prophet said, the old life is a grass life. Its beauty is shortly as wildflowers. Grass dries up, flowers droop, God's word goes on and on forever. This is the word that conceived the new life in you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to me today, these words you are hearing, these words you've been hearing, this gospel that has been preached to you is the word that gave you life and sustains your life. The Bible says this life we have is a life conceived by God himself. He means we have inherent in us God's nature, God's personality, God's, God, God, God's nature has become our nature. The old life lives and dies, but this life goes on forever and ever. And this is a life that you and I have enjoyed. And all because he came, all because he lived, all because he died, and more importantly, because he rose from the dead. And ladies and gentlemen, there are many benefits that are tied to this. I believe that this will be the topic of another message that we will preach sometime in the future, where we will look at the benefits of resurrection. The benefits of resurrection are numerous. I have like 10 of them here. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I need to become accustomed with the things that are ours by virtue of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. One, we have freedom from fear. One of the biggest fears in this world is the fear of death. And once you have died and risen with him, death is no longer your end, so there is no fear of death. You have hope for a certain future. Many people are unsure of what the future holds. They are unsure of the hundred years. We are sure of a billion, trillion, trillion, zillion years because we were conceived by God's word that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. Many people do not have power. They are powerless. They are moving around, being tossed to and fro by everything that is happening in society. But you and I, because Jesus Christ leaves the word of God, makes it clear that this power based on his resurrection is at work within us that is able to do the impossible. By virtue of his power within us, there is nothing that is impossible for us to do because there was nothing impossible for Jesus to do, nothing that's impossible for us to get done. By this power, the church was born. That by this power, he created a church that will not be peripheral to the world, but will be central to how the world is run and how the world is, you know, it finds expression. By virtue of this resurrection, you and I have a choice to change. We have a choice to change our thinking and our behavior. And I put choice there in capital because it doesn't mean that if you come to this new life, it will become automatic. You still need to choose. But now you can choose to live by righteousness. Now you can choose to think right. Now you can choose to change the way that you, you live because of this power that is at work within you. Because of this new life, we now have power over demonic spirits. We are allowed to command territorial spirits and cause them to be subdued. We are allowed to speak to infirm, corrupt spirits and cause them to come out. You and I have been given power over this kind of uh, demonic spirit by virtue of this resurrection. Only because he resurrected and he made a public shame and a public show of them, you and I in him have access to a lot more. You and I have an opportunity to live a new, holy, empowering way of life. We have been a new way of life has been created for us because of this new life. You and I have a default winning attitude by virtue of this new life. That now I don't have to, the Bible says, because I'm born of God, I overcome the world. 
this is my default. My default is I am an overcomer. My default is I will win. My default is everything I lay my hands on will prosper. My default is not that, you know, not complaining, not lamenting, but victory. By virtue of this new life, I have access to God's provision. I have access to God's ears to hear my prayer. Jesus Christ said, because I go to the Father, you can ask for anything you want in my name and it will be done. By virtue of his death and his resurrection, the fact that he leaves, because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, I have, I have access to God to call upon him in his name and know that he will answer me for as long as my life is being lived in alignment with his will. Because of this, I have access to all around salvation. The Lord truly becomes my shepherd. I shall not want. He will guide me. He will make sure that I, have, I lack nothing. If I have any challenge, I can call upon him. For my health, I can call upon him. For my eternity, I can call upon him. For my comfort, I can call upon him. I have all around salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break this down in detail, but understand this, ladies and gentlemen, that because this, this vaccine didn't only come to restore us to life before the vaccine. This vaccine came not only to restore us, but to give us a new, empowering way of life where we walk in freedom, we walk with the certainty of our future, we have internal powers to do the impossible, we can we have a living church that were a gifted living church that was giving gifts because he rose and he gave gifts to men. We have a choice of new thinking that can be transformed now by the renew of our mind because Christ rose from the dead. We have power over demonic spirits because Jesus Christ already shamed them. We have an empowering way of life because we can now choose to see things from his point of view and not keep our eyes on what's on ground because he's risen and seated on the right hand side of God. We have a default winning attitude. We have God's provisions in every in every talent we have, in every need we have, and we have all around salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what is available in Christ's resurrection. And as we celebrate Easter today, let us celebrate that something new is growing on the inside of us. Someone new is growing, is growing on the inside of us. And ladies and gentlemen, God has plenty in stock, plenty in stock, and he wants to direct, he wants to lead the world through his church. And I'm so happy you are here this morning listening to the benefits of this this greatest vaccine ever created for the greatest pandemic that kills all human beings. Everyone born of everyone born, born of human is destined to die. And only those who are in him are destined to live again. And ladies and gentlemen, if people are if 90 year olds don't want to die before 100, if 90 year olds want to still live their life and not let COVID trans, you know, shorten it, how can we? discard the value of eternal life and say it doesn't matter when it is on forever and ever and ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like us to pray this morning. Uh, I think where we bring this to is let us pray. I'd like you to talk to God and say, God, everything that was available in your, in your birth, in your life, in your death and in your resurrection, that is mine. I ask of our Lord that I you will grant me deep insight and revelation. You will cause this word to land in the fertile heart, parts of my heart so that it can bring forth fruit. I want my fruit to be worthy of that which you have finished, O oh God, that which you finished with your birth, finished with your life, finished with your death, and finished out of your glory with your resurrection. I ask for all of your grace to live in the fullness of all of these in the name of Jesus. I ask that I will live in the fullness of that which you made available by your birth, by your life, by your resurrection in the name of Jesus. That I will live a life that glorifies you through and through. I have a Lord in this life, I will participate with you in suffering and I will participate with you in glory. Thank you, Father Lord, for making me pure and authentic gold. And thank you, Father Lord, because when I pass through fire, I am not born to shreds or slitherings or, 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 or to dust or ashes. Father Lord, when I pass through fire, I am renewed. I am made bold. I am made bright. I am made better. Thank you, Father Lord, glory for all the benefits that are available in the resurrection. Father Lord, I receive, Father Lord, today. Father Lord, your blessing. I receive, Father Lord, today, that which you have done, O God, in the name of Jesus. How will I bless and exalt you? How will I magnify your name, O God? How will I be glorified and exalted? Be lifted above every other name, O God. Be magnified, O Lord. Be exalted, King of glory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In, in that same